Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremte News at 5 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Whitney has the evening off. The shelter on Cannon Street in Spokane has undergone many changes over the last couple of years, and the biggest one might just be months away. Kremte's Shannon Mowdy is live at the shelter tonight as the city is discussing closing that site. Shannon? I spoke with Spokane's communications director who tells me the city is still pretty early on in the discussions of what could happen here at the Cannon Street shelter, but those talks could soon turn to action. The proposal is to close this site after May 31st. There's a lot of talk about the future of the Cannon Street shelter. It's a conversation we're having and we're talking about what it would look like if it does close at the end of May. The Salvation Army has run the shelter since late last year, and now the city of Spokane is looking to close it. Are we starting the transition now of Cannon shelter beds to the Trent? When will that process actually begin? And absorb the 80 or so beds here into the Trent Resource and Assistance Center. The Urban Experience Committee heard a request Monday to amend the contract with the Salvation Army to end May 31st giving the organization money to operate until then. At a total of $800,000, which will come from reallocated Department of Commerce shelter program grant funding. But for all this talk... If it wasn't for these people, we wouldn't have no place to go. William hasn't heard anything about it. He's here seven days a week, an easy spot to walk from, and he feels one of the only options for he and his girlfriend. No, if you're a couple, if you're single, I mean, the Union Gospel Mission only gives you 90 days. These guys give you for however long. The city is now discussing how to transition people out of Cannon while talking of what this site could become. Um, we've been starting conversations with other potential providers for that fragile medical shelter that Cannon could then transition into. The leading idea is to transform the shelter into a respite care facility. Brian Coddington says Spokane is moving toward a regional approach to homelessness, partnering with Spokane Valley and the county to address other gaps in service. We're continuing to evolve. We think we made significant steps in the system and there's more work to do. Though without Cannon here, William wonders what gap he'll fall through. Stay in our car and uh, hopefully the cops don't run us off. I did speak with some more people who stay at the Cannon Street shelter, and they tell me that they have never been to the Trent shelter, and a lot of them say they don't plan to go there. In fact, a lot of them say that they will actually just go back to the streets to stay. Shannon Mowdy, Prep 2 News. All right, Shannon, thank you very much. Polls for the 2023 Idaho consolidated election are open and you only have just a few hours to submit your ballot. Just today, Idahoans are heading to the polls to vote on bonds and levies from dozens of school districts across the state. Locally, voters will decide on levies for the Coeur d'Alene, Post Falls, Lakeland and Kootenai school districts. Our team has been going through the levies to find out what's at stake for these local schools. The Coeur d'Alene school district is asking voters to approve two separate levies. The first is a $25 million per year perpetual supplement levy. The second levy is a five year, $5 million per year levy for fire safety and maintenance. If both levies pass, the median homeowner will pay almost $150 more than last year. The Post Falls School District is asking for a nearly $6 million levy for the next two years. It's an increase of a million dollars more per year when compared to last year's levy. However, Post Falls residents may not actually see an increase in their individual taxes thanks to growth in the area. Next up, the Lakeland School District. They are asking for a two-year, $9.5 million per year levy to help the school operate. They are also asking for just over a million dollars for the next six years in a school facilities levy. If both levies pass, taxpayers would pay about $120 per $100,000 in taxable property per year. And the Kootenai Joint School District is asking for $1.3 million for the next two years. This proposed levy will replace the current one that expires in June. If this levy passes, it would almost double the amount taxpayers pay. Taxpayers would pay $93 per $100,000 of taxable assessed value per year. That's compared to just $49 under the current levy. All right, let's talk weather now. Today we enjoyed a nice break from the wet weather as the sunshine made its return to the inland northwest. Let's get straight to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Nagu to ask him if that sunshine is sticking around. Jeremy? I think so. 
I think that's the good news, right? Yeah, for sure. Well, let's dive in right now. We sit in the low 40s, so a little bit cooler than our seasonal average right now. That's about 48 degrees. So yes, those temperatures are trending a bit cooler, but warmer weather is in the works in the days to come. Looks like we topped out around 42 here in Spokane and close to it across much of the inland northwest. We have cloud cover building in right now with moisture streaming into southeast Washington and the southern Idaho panhandle. We'll see that continue to grow more widespread overnight. Basically, it's a stream coming from all the way down through California and out into the ocean. The atmospheric river making its way through. Eventually, we get a frontal boundary passing, and that hits kind of tomorrow. I think a bulk of that is going to be tomorrow afternoon in the mountains. This thing doesn't look like it packs much in the way of energy or moisture. So here in Spokane, we're going to stay dry. A stray sprinkle is about the extent of what is possible, and then we'll wind up seeing more sunshine as we move through the next few days. So tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead and call it partly cloudy. Thursday, mostly sunny and Friday, even more as temperatures climb into the 50s and then stay there through the weekend. All in all, it's looking like a rather warm, rather pleasant forecast in the days to come and a lot different than what we've been seeing lately. Certainly a welcome forecast right now, Jeremy. Thank you very much. In other top headlines tonight, the Meads Dis School District Board of Directors has selected Mead School District's next superintendent. During last night's board meeting, it was decided that Travis Hansen will be stepping in to replace departing superintendent Sean Woodward. Hansen currently serves as the Deer Park School District Superintendent, a position that he has held since 2013. He is expected to take over his new position at Mead coming up on July 1st. Also last night, Spokane City Council members approved raising fees for new home construction projects. The increase is part of the General Facilities Charges Ordinance. It does provide waivers for utility hookups for all new low-income housing built in the city. Meanwhile, Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward also warned the ordinance would immediately add $21,000 to the price of building a new home, essentially pricing even more people out of Spokane's housing market. Council members said they would take the next several weeks to discuss the rate increases and likely modify them. In other news, Washington State lawmakers are considering a bill that would increase funding for the 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. The extra money would be used to add more crisis response teams, provide extra training for those teams, and call operators, and develop a statewide marketing campaign. Since the transition to the easier-to-remember number last summer, more than 300,000 calls, texts, and chats have come in each month. The bill passed in the House last week. It's now being considered in the state Senate.